Okay, everyone, it looks like it just hit six o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to thank everyone who was able to join us tonight. Um, my name is Ashley Bernier, and I'm with WM of Orange County. I'm accompanied by my colleague Jimmy Galvan tonight, and we're here to tell you more about the new City of Laguna Beach uh, SB 1383 Residential Organics Program. You may have received some information in the mail or have seen some uh, information posted on the city's webpage about the new organics program and this new state law. Um, so tonight's goal is to really dive into it and to allow an opportunity for some questions and answers. Um, we will have the Q&A at the end of the presentation. Um, we'll let you go. We'll let you know once this Q&A opens. Um, but to participate, uh, there is a chat box at the top corner of your screen and you can go ahead and enter in your questions there. Um, those those will be funneled through to our team and we'll we'll go ahead and do that at the end. And again, just as a reminder, um, today is really for our our single family residential program. Um, we may have some multifamily residents in the crowd and um, I just wanted to reiterate that if you are a multifamily tenant, um, we will be working individually with each multifamily property to set up a program that fits each property's needs. Um, so again, today is really the focus on the single family residential side um, with the three cart system. So without further ado, we will go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first is let's talk about Senate Bill 1383. This is a huge change in state law that was just recently implemented on January 1st of this year. So we're just about to reach the two week mark of this law being implemented. Um, and this was passed by uh, Governor Jerry Brown and it just went into effect. It requires all residents, including multifamily residents and businesses to separate organic waste from the trash. Now, you know, what is organic waste? Organic waste is green waste. So this is your landscaping waste or your yard trimmings, um, in addition to food waste and food soiled paper. And we'll go over into what types of um, different food waste products are allowed in the container, but really it's anything related to food, you know, your meat, your dairy, your vegetables, fruits, even food soil to paper that's associated with that. You know, if you're getting a napkin that's food soiled or a paper towel that's food soiled, um, this is all part of that organic material that we're trying to get out of the landfill and now have it recycled. Um, so this is, again, this is a state law that just went into effect. The main goal of this law um, is to reduce that organic material to help with the climate change action plan. Um, there is some ambitious contamination reduction in this law, meaning everyone should be recycling right, using your containers that you have for recycling and organics recycling and trash. Um, and of course, um, education and outreach that goes into how to use each container. Again, you may have received this service guide um, in the mail already, but I just wanted to reiterate that we also have copies on our web page We'll have that information at the end, but it's also on the city's webpage as well. So if you need more, or you would like to pass along to some friends, um, definitely feel free to download and print that at home. Um, in addition to this law, there's also going to be a change in the color requirements for, for the carts that you have. Now, this change isn't required right away. Um, of course, Power Cycle and the state, they want us to make sure we're using the current carts that we have now until they're not useful anymore, until they're you know old and need to be replaced. Otherwise, that wouldn't be very environmentally friendly. Um, so over time, you may see new colors in your neighborhood and there will be new standards. So all carts for trash throughout the state will have a black or gray lid for trash, a blue lid for recycling, and a green lid for organics. So really right now we're just, we have it a little flipped in the city where blue is trash and that gray is recycling. So it will be reversed. Um, fortunately, it didn't work out that way at our end, but it will be, you will see some new colors throughout the community. Again, over time, this isn't going to happen all at once. It's a gradual process. But for anyone who's interested in learning more about the state law, we do have um, CalRecycle, who is the state agency who oversees the implementation of this law. Um, their webpage is located on the screen. Again, we'll have all websites and contact information at the end for anyone who wants to screenshot it or write it down. Um, but we have it here just in case anyone's interested in learning more. And I thought it would be very helpful to talk a little bit about why this law was passed. 
So again, this law was passed by Governor Jerry Brown, and of course it was you know, put into effect and finalized under Gavin Newsom. Um, but this law again is to support California's climate change mitigation goals. As we know, California is a beautiful state to live in, um, including the city of Laguna Beach, very environmentally conscious, and we want to do what's right for the environment, um, helping with climate change, reducing our impact. Um, and when organic waste goes to the landfill and when it's decomposing, it releases a powerful greenhouse gas that contributes to global climate change called methane. And so the goal is by taking this organic waste out of the landfill and either you know, turning it into something else like compost, we can use this for something good for the environment, right? Instead of letting it decompose in the landfill and harm the planet. So again, this is really the goal why this law was passed, but there is so much more um, in addition um, you know, this doesn't really affect, you know, residents per se, but part of this law is also about edible food recovery and food insecurity. So, you know, one in four children go hungry in California, at least it's been studied, and there is a 20% edible food recovery component to this law. So really, like I said, it's mostly affecting large businesses, large venues like amusement parks, airports, large commercial restaurants and grocery stores. A lot of times they have perfectly edible food that's still safe to eat and it's good, it's healthy, and sometimes they have to get rid of it and they have nowhere to place it. So this law helps put a goal in place about connecting them to food recovery organizations and making sure that it can go to food banks and food pantries that can go back to our communities, to people in need. So again, this law, while there's a lot of changes happening, especially as far as how we're throwing away our trash, there's a lot of other positives that are going into this law. But for now, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Jimmy Galvan, and he is going to talk a little bit about how to use the containers under this new law and what goes where. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jimmy Galvan, thank you, Ashley. <clears throat> I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about items that are acceptable inside of your trash cart. As many of you already know, the designated trash cart is for waste that cannot be recycled. These items are foam products, which are typically, which we typically see in many of our non-reusable coffee cups, egg cartons, plates, and bowls. In addition, non-recyclable plastics will include any plastic products containing polymers, plastic cutlery, wax-coated paper cups, and pet waste. <clears throat> We would also like to ask that you do not place any needles, chemicals, paint, fluorescent light bulbs, propane tanks, aerosol containers, batteries, electronics, and construction debris inside of any of your containers. Thank you, next slide. Recyclables must be empty, clean, and dry to prevent contamination of other recyclables in the collection truck and at, the, and at the recycling processing center. For example, one ketchup bottle or not a quite empty milk carton can cause your entire bin of otherwise perfectly recyclable items to be contaminated. I wanted to reiterate that the acceptable items for your recycle container are metal, glass, paper products, and plastic. Next slide. Please place loose green food waste materials in the car that has a green lid organic waste, <clears throat> which includes food, green material, landscape, pruning waste, lumber, wood, and paper products. Some of the non-acceptable materials for green waste car are tree stumps, diapers, foam cups, packaging materials, soil, dirt, rocks, concrete, asphalt, plastic bags, animal waste or pet litter, painted wood or treated wood. <clears throat> also wanted to take this opportunity to let Laguna Beach residents know that they may request up to two recycle and two green carts per account at no additional charge by simply calling waste management. Thanks everyone. I will turn it back to Ashley at this point. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, well, that's perfect. That's leading up into going, you know, what goes where and what should not be placed in the containers. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about contamination. I know um, in the beginning I did mention this Senate bill is also very strict about 
you know, using the containers properly, uh, meaning, you know, all trash should be placed in the trash container, all recycling should be placed in the recycling container, and all organic waste should be placed in the organics container. Um, so really, uh, you know, I've seen great participation in the city of Laguna Beach, really um, high interest in doing what, what's right for the environment and recycling. So I, I have no doubt in my mind that we're going to see a lot of great success with this program. Um, but I just wanted to remind, you know, please use the three containers that you have um, properly. If you have questions as to what goes where, we do have the service guide that shows um, you know, what goes into each container. And of course, you can always reach out to our customer service if you ever have a question about if something could be recycled. Um, you know, if there is an issue where we do see, um, you know, maybe someone abusing the system and improperly using their containers and constantly contaminating it, um, this could lead to contamination charge or penalty. Um, again, this is required by state law. So again, I have high confidence in the program and in, in our residents, but just wanted to put that out there and remind everyone to recycle right. And again, for anyone who needs virtual copies, um, we do have this on our local webpage for Laguna Beach at home.wm.com slash Laguna Beach. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, there is a section called helpful resources. If you click to expand that, you can see all educational materials that we have, posters, service guides, any type of helpful information that we've had distributed in the community. In addition, it is also on the city's webpage as well, which we'll share at the end. All right, so a very uh, fun and new exciting component of this program is also some of our kitchen food scraps pails. So over the next few weeks, WM is going to be delivering one kitchen food scrap pail to each single family household. Um, this pail, again, it's, it's for your kitchen, right? So this is, can be kept under your kitchen sink or maybe above your fridge. Really, wherever you feel it is best for you in your home um, to place your food scraps. So any types of um, plate scrapings after dinner, maybe some spoiled food that you're emptying out of your fridge, anything like that. This is, can be used in the home. Um, of course, when it's full or when you're ready to empty it, you would take it outside, directly empty it into your green organics container, and then you would place your green organics container on the curb for service by WM. The pail, I just want to reiterate, this is not what is being serviced by the truck. This is just to be um, kept inside your home for you to separate your food waste in your kitchen. So I do see some residents, they might be confused and they might put it out on the curb or on their cart. But again, we just want to keep it inside the home. It's for in-home use um, only. Now, again, if you want to, you know, maybe place a paper napkin inside there or any food soil paper bag. This can help keep the container a little bit cleaner. Um, they're also washable and reusable, so please continue to reuse them um, over the course of this program. Um, this is a one-time delivery um, for the start of this program, so if you do need additional containers, we just encourage you to visit some uh, local or online retailers for an another pail. And I know we mentioned a little bit about how to keep the container clean, but I just wanted to share a few more tips and tricks that we've heard from other residents and from other areas that have had this program. Um, one way to keep your container clean is just to empty out or rinse your kitchen pail regularly just to make sure it's smelling fresh. You can wipe it down as well if you want to stay water conscious. Um, you can also line that pail with food soiled paper or a paper napkin as mentioned. Food soiled paper is an acceptable item in this program. We do ask that you don't use any plastic bags. Um, unfortunately, even compostable or biodegradable bags. We have a lot of products out there that say they're compostable or biodegradable, but unfortunately they don't break down at the rate that the compost facilities need it to break down. And again, this is going to be used for soil, for land application and farming and all sorts of things. So unfortunately at this time, those products are not accepted but food soil paper is. So if you have a food soil paper bag, that's okay. You can also, if you have your green container, consider lining that container with green waste and landscaping waste first before dumping your food scraps inside. Again, this can just help keep the walls of your container a little bit cleaner um, to mitigate any smells or stains. I have heard some residents have used charcoal filters for their containers to help it smell fresh. I personally have never done this, but I've heard great things, so this is a great option as well. 
Um, and this one, this last one is my favorite. I definitely do this already at home. Um, I typically like to keep my food scraps and my food waste inside my fridge before my service day. It just helps make sure that there's not food waste sitting in my container all week, and it really helps mitigate the smell. So if you can just remember and start to build a habit right before your service day, empty your food scraps and food waste into your container. Again, this can just be a nice tip or trick to follow. All right, so we, we mentioned a lot of resources during the course of this presentation. So I wanted to have one screen. Again, feel free to screenshot, um, write it down. Um, we'll leave the screen up during the Q&A as well, just so that you have time to look it over. But this is just our standard WM customer service. So for any daily needs, um, even outside of this program, right? If you need to schedule a bulk pickup, anything like that, please contact us either by phone, email. We also have a digital chat. And we also have a mobile application. If you haven't done, um, there is a MyWM mobile app. Additionally, um, we have the city's uh, website as long as as well as waste management's website. And this is where we post a lot of helpful information about the waste programs and recycling programs in the city. And lastly, again, CalRecycle is a state agency that oversees the state laws in regards to solid waste and recycling. So if you want to learn more more about SB 1383, see the final text yourself and look look over their timelines and the reasons for passing this law. Um, there's their web page where we can definitely find some helpful information. But thank you so much. I just wanted to again appreciate everyone's time. I know that was a really kind of brief overview, um, but we wanted to save a lot of time to dive into your questions. So right now we're going to go ahead and open up the Q&A. Again, to participate in the Q&A, there will be a chat box on your screen, so go ahead and enter in your questions and we will go ahead and start answering them. And then for those of you that may have joined a few minutes late, um, no worries, we will go ahead and make sure there is a copy of the presentation slides on our web page as well as the cities and we will also post a recording, probably be available by early next week, as well as any frequently asked questions from tonight. So again, if you missed it, no worries, there will be another opportunity to, to see this again. All right, for, the, for just about a minute here, we'll go ahead and let a few questions come in and then we'll get started. Okay, I see, see a question that came in that says, does this mean there's no more compost giveaways? And no, that is not true. We are actually still doing compost giveaways in the agreement, so um, the very exciting thing is all of this material that you are putting into the compost program, you can get back at our compost giveaway that we do annually with the city. So no, not at all. This is still a program that you will see. I do see another question about recycling. Um, can you recycle shredded paper? And yes, you definitely can recycle shredded paper, this would go into the recycling container. I would recommend um, to help keep it from flying away during service, especially on a windy day. Um, you'll, you can put it in a paper bag or like a small cardboard box and this just helps keep it contained. Another question is what is the size of the kitchen container? This is a two gallon container. So um, hopefully you know that answers it, but that's, but that's it, just two gallons. Another question is about cooking oil, if that can go into this new program. And yes, I would say minimal amounts of cooking oil are okay. We know, you know, after you cook bacon, you might need to scrape that into, into the container. Now, if it's a, a large amount of cooking oil, I would say that would be, um, especially if you're a commercial business or property, you probably would have a grease trap and a different service for that. But, um, you know, for a residential amount of cooking oil, absolutely, it's okay. Okay, and I see another question, um, especially about the garbage disposal. Can I still put food waste down the garbage disposal? And yes, so if you're, you know, if you are safely put using your garbage disposal, you know, just for your standard every day, um, food waste, that is still okay to use. Um, but of course, for certain products that we know just aren't safe to put down our drain or would, you know, damage our garbage disposal. So um, consider using your organics container for that type of waste.
Okay, so I'm gonna ask about grease soaked pizza boxes. And yes, so this is a, considered a food soiled paper product. So if it's the greasy food part of your pizza box, that is okay to put in the organics container. Now, what I would recommend if you have a clean side of that pizza box, maybe the lid isn't covered with cheese and grease, I would you know, go a step further and rip that off so it can be recycled. Um, it's definitely always good if it's still clean, clean paper, clean cardboard, um, really just any clean recyclable material that should still be placed in the recycling container. Oh, here's a really good question as well. So how do we determine if plastics are actually recycled? And I know there's been a lot of questions about plastic recycling because, you know, there's just been so many changes in the market um, over the last few years. So the best way that I can remember what's recyclable when it comes to plastic is by shape. I know we hear a lot of rumors about if it has a triangle or a number on it, that automatically means it's recycled. But unfortunately, that's not the case. We see a lot of times people or manufacturers will put triangles and numbers on things and they're not actually recyclable. So usually I say by shape, I would say by if it's a plastic bottle, jar, jug, or tub, that's a very commonly used recyclable item. That's probably the easiest way I can say it. Um, but we do have some great resources again in the recycling guide um, that talk about some of the common plastic, plastic items that we see. Another question was asking if the pail is dishwasher safe. And yes, yes it is. I've heard some residents have used it and so far so good, but yeah, it's a, just perfectly safe to use in the dishwasher. Um, it's probably will last longer if you hand wash it. I do notice that with a lot of, of certain items, um, but if you choose to do that, you can. Another question, oh, I'm sorry, this was a clarification. He had shredded paper in the organic. So can you put shredded paper in the organics container? And that is definitely acceptable. Again, food soiled paper is fine in this program. So if you would like to use shredded paper and you want to just, you know, you have some from your office and you want to put some good use to it, absolutely. And we did just check in. I wanted to follow back up on that compost giveaway. I know we have one this spring and it looks like April 16th um, on 1900 Laguna Canyon Road at that court at the Act, Act 5 lot. Um, it'll be from 8 a.m. to noon. So you'll see that being posted on the city website um, very soon and more information to come. But keep your calendar open for a, it's around Earth Day usually every year. So we'll have our compost giveaway. Another question was, can we recycle the metal lids from glass jars? And yes, yes, you can. Go ahead and actually just keep that lid on the jar. Um, a lot of times, uh, even if you have just a little bit of residue, it just helps keep the rest of the container clean. So yeah, go ahead and keep the lids on the jar and that's totally fine. Another question is, when will the kitchen pails be delivered? So we are actually delivering them, I believe, starting in the next week. And it will take about a few weeks to get to every resident in the city of Laguna Beach. But by the end of January, I would say early February, the latest, um, all single family residents should have a pail. Another question is if animal bones can be added. And again, yes, small amounts of bones. If these are, you know, just your chicken bones or just regular food waste that's associated to that, that's okay. <laughs> if you have like a large amount, uh, you know, an industrial amount of bones, which I don't think any residents would have, we would probably consider throwing that in the trash because this is a difficult product to compost, but small amounts are okay. Another question is if there is a program for schools, and I think, thank you, Jeff, that's a great question. So, you know, actually before this Senate bill, there was another state law that went into effect back in 2016, and it was called Assembly Bill 1826. And this law actually required commercial businesses that generated certain amounts of organic waste to recycle it back then. So schools over time became part of this mandate, and they have actually been participating in the program in Laguna Beach for years. Their program is a little different, so we work with them individually to help make sure that they have a food waste recycling program. Um, again, it's a little different from the residential program we have, but yes, they do participate and um, we're very excited 
that they are very uh, strong supporters of the program. Another question was asking about the, let's see, is it upgrading the size of the green waste container for a multi-unit building? Let's see. I think, you know, again, it depends. If this is a multi-family building, um, I know with each multi-family property manager, we're working individually with them to make sure that we provide the size. Um, we have various sizes of containers, um, but the size and the service is appropriate for each multi-family. Um, so again, if you're a multi-family tenant and you're wondering how to participate in this program, um, we do work with each multi-family property manager to accommodate that. But if any questions specifically, if you, you know, need another size of your resident, a single family residential with a cart, you can definitely contact WM Customer Service to exchange the size. Another question was um, the flyer that was sent that had said that there was about two and a half tons of food recycled. That it, okay, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase. The flyer that was sent said that two and a half tons of food recycled is the same as taking two million cars off the road a year. And doesn't that sound high? Um, it, unfortunately, I can't speak too much to the science behind that, but you know, I do find that really amazing. If, you know, again, that is true. I know every ton of food waste that's recycled, whether it's through compost or whether it's through um, a food to energy program, it certainly helps the environment. So Again, unfortunately, I can't speak too much to the science behind that fact, but I, you know, that is what we've been told, and that's um, really exciting if that's true. Another question here is asking, um, are they really giving reused food to needy families? Um, so again, we did talk a little bit about the food recovery aspect of this program, and I, I wanted to make sure Again, this this is a 20% edible food recovery goal. So it's not necessarily that if we don't meet it, you know, we we failed, right? It's just it's a statewide goal to recover as much edible food as possible, and it's not necessarily the state that's collecting it, right? This is just talking about educating these large venues and large food generators and getting them in contact with local food recovery services. Um, I've had the pleasure to work with a few um, services here in Orange County, and I can assure you they are connecting with a lot of great, great organizations, and they really do find them food recovery services that are picking up their food waste, make sure it's being handled safely in accordance with health code, and bringing it to pantries such as the Laguna Beach Food Pantry, and that's going back to the communities. So yes, it, it's already happening now. It's been happening for years. So this is just a larger push to educate more and more um, edible food recovery generators. Another question was about coffee grounds and coffee filters. And yes, both of these are acceptable in the food program. Another question was about compostable bags um, or having to use water to clean out your containers. Okay, so I think these are kind of two questions. So for in regards to the compostable bags, again, these types of products at this time are not currently accepted, but food soiled paper, like a food soiled paper bag, maybe you went to a fast food restaurant and you know you have that burger bag, or you know you're from your Ralph's, uh, food, you know, anything that was a food soiled paper bag is okay for this program because that's easily composted and actually degrades down in the same time frame that the compost facilities needed to, to break down by. Now, in regard to using water to clean out your containers, um, we do discourage this. Um, we know there are, obviously there's a water shortage, so it's definitely not water friendly, but also there is, you know, municipal codes in place that would not want this type of water being dumped into the streets and, you know, contaminating storm water or anything like that. We do recommend, you know, you can wipe down your container with either a reusable cloth or a disposable cloth, um, a sponge, you know, just to help, you know, keep it clean. But we definitely don't encourage to rinse it out with water and certainly not dumping it in your street. I 
Another question is if animals are now going to be attracted because of unwrapped food in the bin. And if, you know, from our experience and seeing programs from around the country and even other countries, we do not see an increase in pests and rodents. I know it is unwrapped, but it's really as long as you keep that lid closed in your container, there shouldn't be really any difference from when you were putting it in your trash container. So from our experience, this shouldn't be a problem, but we do highly encourage, you know, residents keep the lids closed and bring your containers in when it's not your service day, just to help, you know, keep any, any unwanted creatures or critters away. Another question is how you can tell if paper plates have a plastic or wax coating and if these are recyclable. And this is an excellent question. Um, and so thank you so much for bringing this up. So yeah, wax coated paper, unfortunately, is not really what we would want in this compost program because of that wax lining. And it is a little difficult to tell. So I certainly don't anticipate, you know, everyone needs to, to be 100% perfect at this in the beginning, but typically you can tell um, just by the feeling of it. If you rub it your hands in between and you can feel a waxiness or a plasticiness to the paper, probably it's not really recyclable. Um, but if it's a pure paper, um, again, you know, when you feel paper in between your hands and even like a brown paper bag or a brown paper plate or a white paper plate, I see a lot of those, um, you know, those are pure paper products. Unfortunately, I don't have really the best way to tell you like this is 100%, there's always a symbol or anything like that, um, but it's really about the feeling. And of course, I, you know, our web, our internet is a great resource. If you ever are curious and you want to see the products that you're using, you know, if it's a paper product or if there's a wax coating, you know, you could always recommend searching that online with the manufacturer or just seeing the, the labeling on the product. Another question is, oh, it looks like we have a home composter. So can we still use our kitchen scraps for our personal compost bins? And of course, absolutely. This law is not saying that you can't compost at home or do whatever it is you do with your food waste. It's just mandating that you don't throw it in the trash. Um, it is a mandatory service, regardless if you compost at home or you don't have food waste. Um, every resident is required to have this service, but if you're still composting and you wanna to continue to do that, absolutely, please continue. And um, hopefully you're using that compost for your garden and um, it's doing doing well. I can't wait to see everyone in the spring and all the, the canyon. Hopefully it'll have a lot of flowers this year. Okay, so there's another question about the simplest way to get an organic waste bin from waste management. Um, right now this resident only has a trash and a recycle. And I did want to point out, we do have a select amount of residents that do live in some hard to service areas in Laguna Beach. And again, within the next few weeks, we will be automatically providing a green container to everyone, even if you're in a hard to service area. Now, if after the beginning of February and you still don't have a green container and you just, you know, happen to lose it or not have one and you still need one from WM, the best way is to just contact us at our customer service and we can help deliver one to you. But if you are one of those hard to service customers in the canyon, you only have, um, you know, either a, a trash and a recycle, then it, you can expect one coming from waste management in the next few weeks. Um, another question was the length, width, and height of our kitchen pail. And I'm, I do apologize, Kurt, I don't have those dimensions. I only know that it's a two gallon pail. Um, but if you wanna reach out, I'll have Alexandria um, give you our contact information. Um, that way we can, we can get back to you and hopefully we can get that answer for you. Okay, so I do see how, how will compliance and potential fines be implemented? So again, this, this is a law that is mandatory. And of course, there, you know, there just might be some people who don't wanna participate and they wanna to continue to throw organic waste in the trash. And you know, we do have to monitor it and we do have to notify residents when we do find contamination. Um, so over time, you know, the city is putting in an ordinance. This ordinance is required by state law um, and you know, potential fines could be implemented. 
Um, again, there is a warning system in place, education that is provided first, but really if we see a repeat offense of, um, you know, just a bad actor, um, that, that's really how it's monitored. Um, okay, so then if we line the pail with a paper bag, can we dispose of the bag with the food contents? And yes, food soiled paper is acceptable in this program. So if you, you know, you're using that paper bag to line your pail or to place your food scraps in, feel free to just include that bag, um, as long as it's paper, again, into the food container. Another question is, will Laguna Beach support or fund a compost initiative to teach weekly on-site workshops at all schools? Um, well, I certainly, I can't speak on behalf of the city of Laguna Beach, but I can speak on behalf of WM's program. So we do actually offer um, compost workshops throughout the year in coordination with the city. And I know, um, you know, we've had various groups that have reached out to us and um, potentially this could be schools as well, where we could have our compost educator teach about comp composting. Um, we've also done assemblies and worked with the schools directly to do um, really fun, um, you know, just educational programs about recycling. And so, yes, this is definitely an option that WM has helped with the past about providing it and certainly um, not something that we would charge the school for. Um, but yeah, again, as part of if there's a city program for school specifically, I, I cannot speak to it, but I definitely can speak to the, the current WM programs that we have for education. OK, we see another one about uh, what about a vegetable based liner? Um, there is a product called the Scrap Sack, which is a compostable food waste bag description to collect food scraps. And, you know, I do have to apologize. I've never heard of this one before. So I can't really speak to this program right now. I just know that as as this current time, compostable and biodegradable products, we've been asked not to accept those materials. I'm not saying this will be, you know, something forever. I'm hoping there will be a chance where all products will eventually have that same standard compostable rate. Um, but the best thing I could say is either to either put it in loosely into your container or to use a food soiled paper bag. Um, but that, that is a really interesting project uh, product and I would like to investigate that further just to see what it's made of. I've never heard of that one before. Another question is, you know, I have a neighbor that leaves their cans out for several days after trash pickup day, and what can we do about that? Um, well, you know, unfortunately, there isn't much WM can do about that, but we certainly can reach out and see if there's any, you know, either code enforcement or municipal code that speaks to that issue. Um, as of right now, unfortunately, again, you know, we can't force the resident to bring it back in, but we'll, we'll certainly be happy to, to look into that issue for you. Then their question is for, oh, this is in regard to the recycling container and cardboard boxes. So do we need to remove any of that tape or any of that fiberglass reinforced tape on Amazon boxes? And no. So feel free if the cardboard box that you order off of Amazon comes with tape, no need to remove it. You can leave it on. And same with shipping labels. Sorry, I see another question. Do you need to tear off shipping labels? And no, not, no need at all. Um, you can leave those on as well. Okay, currently it looks like we got through all questions at this time. Um, we'll certainly stay on for, for a little bit longer in case any more come through. Um, but again, uh, just as a reminder for anyone who has joined late or um, you know maybe missed a little bit of the presentation and is interested in learning more, um, we will have a recording of this presentation. It might take a few days for us to get the link in the download. Um, so I would expect that maybe early next week, we can post that to our website under the helpful resources and also share that with the city as well. Um, we can also post the slides to this presentation on our website. And of course, you can always reach out to either our email or customer service for any questions regarding this new program. Another question was about 
recycling cartons. And I think, hopefully I understand um, this product specifically, but yes, so cartons, like if you're referring to like the milk cartons or anything like that, um, yes, that would be acceptable. And the recycling, sorry, I want to emphasize that. Oh, and here's a follow-up question. So would waste management hire a master composter to teach students at school to compost food residuals and var various backyard composting devices? Um, so yes, we actually do. We have partnered with our expert composter who helps support WM for, for many years, and she does an amazing job. She does all of our compost classes in the city of Laguna Beach, and she certainly um, is happy to do them at schools or also happy to invite children to the compost classes that we do in the community. Um, this isn't on a weekly basis, I would say probably more on a quarterly um, basis, but again, we're, we welcome all ages. So anyone from, you know, kids to teens, adults and uh, senior citizens as well. Another question was about plastic containers that are for food, like for example, a deli salad from the grocery store. And yes, this can definitely be placed into the recycling. Just of course, you wanna make sure none of that food waste is inside, place that food waste in the organics container, or if you ate it all, uh, even better. Uh, but yes, that plastic container is okay for the recycling. And yes, we, we do accept milk cartons in, in the recycling, even if it has that wax material, they are a little bit harder to recycle than um, previous years, um, but we still do accept them in the program. So um, can, you can continue to do that. Okay, and then, and there's another question. Um, so if there, you know, if you have, um, if you're disabled or are not able to carry a pail up to your bin, um, we don't have an option for us to take your in-home pail and empty it into your container for you. But we certainly do have an option for where we have um, a service where we can roll out your containers, your larger containers that are serviced by WM, out to the curb and service those. So if you need to enroll in that program, um, we do, you know, just offer, um, you know, you can contact Waste Management Customer Service and they can walk you through that process on how to sign up for that program. And um, for our disabled residents, I just want to emphasize this is not an additional charge. Oh, and it looks like actually we got an answer in, in regard to that pail dimensions. And um, it looks like they're about 11 and a half inches in length, eight and a half inches in width, and nine and a quarter inches in height. So thank you, Jimmy, for, for, for bringing that up. You're welcome. Perfect. Okay, well, again, it looks like we don't have any other questions that are currently pending in our queue. Um, again, if any come through, I'm happy to, to stay on for just a little bit longer, but, um, you know, for, again, for those of you who joined us, thank you so much. Um, I guess, you know, if there's any other thing, any other questions that you have, feel free to still reach out to our customer service and, you know, they'd be happy to direct them our, to our team and we can help you with the program. Oh, and then there's another question. So will residents be able to get or buy Laguna Beach compost back from WM? And really the, the opportunity that we 
present residents in our agreement is that we actually have a compost giveaway every single year. So April 16th is the next compost giveaway for this year. We do encourage you to come by. Um, it's in the morning, usually starts from 8 a.m. And I always say early bird gets the worm and no pun intended, but that is definitely the earlier the better. That way we just make sure that there's enough supply for everyone. Um, and again, this is just this is the compost that's coming directly back from the community. So all of that greenness and food waste that we collect that goes to our compost facility, we're bringing it back and um, residents can obtain um, some compost. It's a perfect time in the spring just because um, everyone's starting to garden again and starts to grow all their fruits and vegetables. So uh, it's a really well attended event and certainly encourage you to refer to the city website for, for more information and details. And just as an additional note um, for that for that event, we have about five five gallon size buckets. That is the limit for that uh, the compost giveaway. And we do encourage all residents to bring bring your own bucket as well. This is a self service event, so um, you get a, you get you get to dive into the to the compost. Right, everyone. Well, it looks, it looks like our questions have pretty much ended. So I think we can go ahead and probably, you know, end this presentation for tonight. Um, again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We are so excited um, to, to start this program with you. And we've seen so much positive feedback and so much excitement from residents in the city. So, um, you know, we're very excited to see how it goes. And, you know, any questions or you know, issues or challenges with the program, please let us know. We want to help make this as easy as possible. Um, we know it's a big change and, you know, this for some it might be uh, harder than others and others we have some natural composters at home. So I think we definitely can ask our neighbors what works and what doesn't work and um, support each other through the process. Um, but of course, in the meantime, please um, stay safe. I know we had to join virtually tonight. Obviously, we would have loved to meet you in person for this meeting, but just due to the current state of the pandemic, this was the safest option to meet tonight. Um, so continue to hopefully get through these next few weeks, stay safe and healthy. And um, yeah, no, I, have a great day. And again, you know, any questions that still come through, um, we'll, we're gonna post all those frequently asked questions on our webpage, probably again, you'll see it early next week, as well as a recording of uh, tonight's, tonight's presentation and the slides. But thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a great evening. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out there very soon. Bye-bye now.